All right, so to start off with the type on path, um, since Annie was asking about circles, I'll just start with a circle. And so when you get the, um, the text tool, if you hold, click and hold on it, you get all of these different type options. Um, what you are going to want to use is the type on path tool and that's going to differ from the type in a vector object um, tool. You'll see with this one you get like a round, a bunch of rounded um, dots around the cursor. Maybe. Um, the type on path one will have this line going through the cursor. So then you know it's, it's going to um, put the type on a path. So you just click anywhere on the path and you get the cursor to start there. Um, and let's see. Um, so let's say this is the name of my company. Now when I put in the type, it just puts it wherever I clicked with my cursor. If I want to change um, the way that text is falling on the path, I would go to my direct selection tool. And as soon as I do that, these um, perpendicular lines appear along the path. So the line that um, is to the left of the text is the left margin, essentially. There's one to the right, which defines the right margin. And then there'll be a third one that'll be the center mark. So if you want the text to be centered along your path, you're going to want to go ahead and change the paragraph alignment to align center. And then rotate the left and right margins so that this center line is completely vertical. But... Um, the other option is to keep it um, left aligned or right aligned, and you can scoot the left or right margins around accordingly. Um, if, you, if your margins are too close and your text gets broken off, you'll get this red box, and so that tells you that there's some overset text. And then you can also move the center um, the center line here and that will shift the whole um, whole text line to wherever you want it. So I'm going to put this back in the center where I had it. Um, so it, in terms of like flipping the text different ways, you can go to the center curse the center line here and pull it down and it'll pull the text inside of the circle. So that's how you would do it manually. The other way, if you want to go in and change more options with how the text falls with on the, um, within or on the path, uh, you would go up to type and then type on path options. And over on the drop down menu, you get different, um, different options to choose from. But I usually just go to the actual options because it brings up a window and you can preview what's happening. So if I click preview, I could click flip and it does the same thing as moving that center line downwards. Um, then you have these other effects. So rainbow um, kind of has the text so it flares out along um, the baseline. Skew will shift it so that it's um, more like a vertical perspective, so it fits everything within this rectangle along the path. Um, greedy Ribbon, some of these other ones are just really weird and you probably should never use them. Um, then there's the baseline. Now this is determining where the text falls within the path itself. So just like you can tell um, the stroke to be on the outside or the inside of the shape, you can do the same thing here. So right now the baseline is um, the path. 
I can change it so that all of the text aligns to the A senders in that typeface, the D senders, so in this case, letters like the Y would be touching the path. And then center means that the center of the cap height is aligned to the path. So especially if, you're, if your type is looking kind of wonky, I would recommend going to the type on path options and adjusting the align to path settings because those kind of adjustments might make your letters look more natural. All right. Um, so Annie was asking about taking um, one shape and kind of having two different blocks of text on it. The way I would do that is I would take a shape and I would take the scissors tool and for instance if I'm using a circle I would clip it in half. So. I have the same object, but now I have two different paths. So now I can take the type on path tool and put in my text. And have one on top. And then put some other text on the bottom. Um, I'm going to flip that the other way. And then this is a good mm -hmm. example of going back to the type options and changing the way the type falls along the path. So I'm going to have it aligned to the A senders. So that way it has the same type of um, same type of roundness as the top portion. Um, I think as well, if I want to make some adjustments with the type, I can bring up the character menu. And since these letters are aligning to the very bottom of um, the type, I kind of want this text to align to the cap height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this baseline shift option in the character menu, and I'm going to move that text up a few points until the capital letters hit that path. And then if there's any other adjustments you need to make, like the kerning, tracking, all that kind of stuff, um, there's options to change the spacing in the type on path menu, but you can, just like any other program, you can be more accurate if you can go in yourself and change the spacing between letters. So I may space some of these out a little bit more. make these bigger. So that's how I would recommend kind of using one shape, um, split, it, split it up with the uh, with a scissor tool and just have two or more paths to work with. Um, okay. So are there any other questions about type on paths or types in or type in Illustrator in general? Yeah. Sorry. I know you had some stuff from last time about um, joining script in Illustrator. Yeah. Okay. Um, So let me find, oh my gosh, 
apparently I don't have much type to choose from in here. So I'm just going to have to use, I'll use a serif. And it's going to look really bad, but you can, I think you'll be able to still understand how it would work with a script. Okay, so let's say I want to um, have all these letters look like they're part of the same vector shape. So if this were script, I would want all of the, um, I would want to make ligatures, make it look like it's all been written together. Once I get the type size I want, I would go to type and create outlines. And then you can do two things. When you do outlines, it automatically groups all of that text into one um, group. So I can double click inside and I get access to the individual letters. The other option is to use the direct selection tool and I can just select any of those letters even though they're grouped. And all I have to do is I'm holding down shift so it's all in the same baseline and I just move the letters together. So these are all separate but now they are all touching one another. Um, if you are using um, a script typeface, you might want to make some adjustments to the actual um, ligatures to make them look more smooth. Um, but what I would recommend doing is keeping this as a group where all the letters are separate. And like I've said before, I tend to make tons of duplicates so that I can make edits to one thing but still have the original to go back to. So I'm duplicating this. I'm going to ungroup it and then go to the Pathfinder menu and unite all those letters together. So now it is truly one vector shape. And so this will make it easier to adjust the individual connections. So I'm going to take the pen tool and adjust some of these so maybe this is a little bit rounded and just kind of make all of this look the way I want it to um, over here, I want this transition to be really smooth, so I'll actually take the pen tool and delete some of these points. And then use the handlebars to make smoother, smoother curves. So now it's starting to look a little bit more intentional. So that's how you would do, do that. Other questions about type? OK, so one thing that, that came up a few times was um, using strokes. And especially if you guys have taken typography, I hope somebody has told you that um, strokes with, with text can be really tricky. and. 98% of the time you shouldn't do it. Um, if you do decide to do it, I would limit it to text that's large and has um, doesn't have a lot of contrast between thicks and thins. So I wouldn't do it to something like Bodoni um, or something along those lines. There's ways that you can make it work and I'll talk about that, but Generally speaking, let's say I want to um, try putting some outlines on this. I'm going to use, I'm going to change the color, maybe to orange. It'll let me.
And then I'll choose a stroke. And since people tend to start with black, I'll, I'll start with black. Um, but you, you'll see when you first put the stroke in and you zoom in and see the path, the stroke is going equally on either side of the path. So anytime you start off putting a stroke on an object, that's what it does. It's just the default. But if you go to the stroke menu over here, you see these different options. So there's this align to stroke option or align stroke option. The first one is where the, um, the stroke goes evenly on either side of the path. The second option, it puts the stroke inside of the vector object. You don't want to do that at all with text because it's, especially ones that have a lot of thicks and thins, because anything that's thin is just going to show up as stroke and it will look like a mistake because more than likely it is. Um, what I would suggest doing is using this third one, which is to put the stroke outside of it. So if I zoom in again, you'll see the path and all of the stroke width is outside the path. That way the interior of the shape doesn't get messed with. Then there's other options over here. The cap refers to the shape of the very ends of a line. I don't have any of that. Um, I don't have any open paths on this, so that wouldn't work for this one, but let's say I've got a line here and it's really heavy. The default is to have this squared off end of the path. If I do the rounded one, it obviously puts like a semicircle on either end. Um, this last one, it still squares it off again, but it pushes the same, um, the same point size out to the end of each um, end of the stroke. So just depending on the look you're going for, if you have any open paths, you can consider going in and changing the options. A lot of times the rounded edge um, makes things look a lot more, uh, look, look smoother and more polished but it just depends on the look you're going for. The other option is the corner option. So similar to the cap, you've got kind of the square edge here. Then you've got a rounded option, so all of the corners get rounded a little bit. This last one is beveled. So it takes the corners and cuts them off. So similar to a lot of other options, it just depends on the look you're going for. So if I want like a really chiseled look, then maybe I'll use the beveled corners. Um, sometimes if you're getting really weird corners, the rounded or the beveled will make it look a, li a bit better. Um, I talk a lot about the color of the lines and the reason I'm not huge on black is because sometimes it doesn't look as well considered as using another stroke color or not using a stroke at all. So in this instance, I would probably think about using a different color for the um, outline. And sometimes you can try a color that may, maybe is a little, um, has, like it falls on either the left or the right side of the initial color on the color wheel. So maybe I go with a little bit of darker color. Um, the other option, so I'm going to take this color and make it a global color. So now I can go and make this a lighter tint. So everything's in the same hue and I'm just messing with um, how much white is in the color. So that's why I'm saying like, maybe instead of a, a black line, maybe you try a brown or something that fits with the rest of your concept. 
Sometimes black is appropriate because maybe you're going with a certain style. But I really want you guys to be cognitive of the black line and what it's saying about your work. Um, if it's not, if it doesn't need to be there, maybe take take the lines off and see how it looks without it. Um, or maybe adjust the colors or the size, so on and so forth. Um, so, one other thing I guess I'll show you that I'm talking about um, strokes here. Let's say I want to play with, I want to actually be able to manipulate the stroke. Obviously, when it's just a stroke on the vector object, there's the only thing I can change is the vector object itself. The stroke is attached to that path. So if I want to manipulate just the areas with the stroke, what I would do is uh, go to Object and Expand Appearance. And what this does is it takes everything and converts it to a vector shape. So this is all grouped together. When I click inside of the group, now the stroke is separate and the original vector shape is separate. If you um, are trying to make adjustments to the text, like let's say, actually maybe I'll use another shape. Let's say I have a star and I want it to look a little bit rounded on the inside. Sometimes I'll actually use um, the stroke and then expanding to manipulate the shape of the vector. So I'm going to make this stroke a little bit heavier. And yeah, maybe it won't work for this one. I'll make it a lot heavier. Um, and I have it aligned so that the stroke is falling evenly on either side of the path. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Sometimes you'll see expand appearance, sometimes you'll see expanse um, available. If it says expand, it's going to bring up this window so you can choose what parts of the shape get expanded. Since I want to have the stroke expanded and the fill, I'm going to have both selected. So both of those get converted into vector shapes. And when I double click inside of it, I get the stroke, which fell on either side of the path. And then I get the shape, which still adheres to that original path. So when I have them both selected, you can see where the path underneath falls on that outline stroke. But what I want to do is I want to actually um, just get this center area that's the brighter orange. So to do that, I can use the Shape Builder tool. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to ungroup these objects and then select them and then use the Shape Builder tool to roll over just that star. And if I just click once, then this becomes its own separate shape. And then I still have this stroke, but I also have that other outline that's been cut out. So I would suggest if you need to kind of cut apart certain elements of overlapping shapes, use the Shape Builder tool. Um, it'll allow you to roll over specific spots. So I could, let's say, roll over just this part of the, the shape and get that, but maybe... I want this outline to merge back with the smaller star. I can click and drag, select both of those, and I get, I get this separate star shape. All right, other questions about using strokes or anything else in Illustrator? All right. So I guess y'all are experts now. Yeah. Well, is it something that I can talk about up here, or is it specific yeah. up here? Okay.
All right. Actually, I have a little bit of a question. I guess we're able to what that means in a specific situation. Okay. What about it specifically? Um, well, I guess normally just trying to um, I guess setting a box in front of someone in the face and then fighting the same thing. Okay, um, gradients. So a lot of times if I'm going to work with a gradient, I'll just go ahead and take the menu and pull it out so that it's separate. Um, the default is always the black and white gradient. So I can go ahead and click and put that gradient into the shape. If I double click on either of these squares down here, I get a menu with all of the swatches that I currently have from the document. Um, I can also switch to color and get access to um, the color mixer and choose my own color. The other thing I can do is pull up my swatches or the color menu and select colors and just drag and drop them. Um, if I roll over the squares that already exist, it's going to put that color into those squares. Alternatively, if I click and drag a color and place it anywhere else along the gradient line, it puts a new square there. So now I've got three different colors going along this gradient. To adjust where the color is falling, I can click and drag on these squares and move them. And this location um, window right here is going to tell me the percentage that that color is falling at. So if I want it at exactly 50%, I can type in 50 and it'll adjust it. Then these diamonds up here determine where those two colors are 50-50. So I can also move those and the percentage changes as well. So maybe I want the orange to only be on the very edge, so I make that at 20, 25%. And same with the green over here, I'll make that 75%. Um, the other way of adjusting the gradient is, once I've already put the gradient in, I can use the gradient tool. And once I click that, it'll bring the gradient bar to the shape. So now I can see exactly where the gradient is falling on the shape. Um, if I roll over to one side, I can rotate the bar. So then the gradient gets rotated. It's the same as changing the degrees over here in this, this window. But just like using the menu over here, I can adjust each individual color and the blend locations in real time. And I can still think I should be able to click and drag. I can put new colors, I guess, by clicking onto the bottom here and double click on those and then put the color I want into that area. You can make some really ugly gradients this way. <laughs> Now, if I want to do a radial gradient, I would go over to this um, menu again and change that. And now, instead of the bar falling across the whole object, it's just going from the center to the outer diameter. Um, but I can still pull this out, so maybe I'm extending the gradient beyond the shape a little bit. I can bring it in. I can still rotate it, which doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and make all of the same changes. Um, does that answer, or was, that, was there anything else? Okay. All right, any other questions?
Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And it tr- I wanted to layer that on uh, either on top or behind, mm-hmm. and it made it gray. And I'm not sure what I did, but I can't ungray it. I wanted it to be like a brown. Okay. Um. All right. Let me I mean, I I see if I can. Over, so I'm guessing it's a Photoshop. Conte crayon? Yeah. Okay, so this is similar to like using um, the halftone or any other texture. What this is doing is it's translating all of the colors in terms of value and switching it back to grayscale. So if you want to use this, I'm going to duplicate this again like I always do. Um, Let's see. Is it under sketch, Conte? Similar to some of the pixelate or other options, what you'd have to do is expand this or do live trace. Um, let me try expand appearance and see what that does. Yeah, I think you have to do live trace first. So I would go to live trace. Well, that doesn't work either. So you convert yours to a top row from the top to an image? And you open the middle? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes it does that. All right, so expand appearance first, then do live trace. And it's going to automatically convert it to however it thinks will look the best. So depending on what you're expecting, you'll probably just have to experiment and see if you can get close to what you want. Um, but then you're going to need to actually let me bring up the live trace options. Um, I'll do ignore white. And then do expand again. So now I can take this and change the color. So you mentioned like a brown. So I can do that and then still have maybe my original, maybe put that behind it. So, I mean, it's, it's not too bad. It kind of looks like a wood texture. But that would be the only way to do it. When you go to any of these um, Photoshop effects and you see the preview here, if it's in black and white, that means it's going to be working with black and white. Um, some of these other ones, if they have color, then it's going to work with the color you have. But um, yeah, like I keep saying, the Photoshop effects. They work a lot better in Photoshop because it's working with pixels and Illustrator's trying to work with vector. So a lot of times it's going to look a lot more pixelated or um, digitized in general than if you did it in Photoshop and were working strictly with pixels. Other questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace? Yeah. All right.